So let's have a quick look at the difference between the RPL and the PPL. Now to do that, we also need to look at this 1.11, which is the syllabus dot points uh, for the basic aeronautical knowledge, which it is assumed that all license levels will know this. Now what I've done is try as best as possible to line them up side by side for sections that are similar and left gaps where they're not similar. So that you can get a bit of an idea of the difference between the two. So anything that's in this column, RPL and PPL need to know. Anything that's in this column, only RPL needs to know. Anything in this column, only PPL needs to know. So as you can see, when we're looking here at the power plants and systems, the uh, RPL, apart from what's in the BAK, only needs to know a very little bit. But whereas when you look at the PPL, all of a sudden they need to go into some extra detail about um, density, height and altitudes, how they affect uh, normal aspirated versus turbo, and then the operation of turbo and supercharging wastegates and things like that. So then over here, everyone's expected to know these basics, you know, crankshafts, four stroke, first two stroke, etc. Fuel tanks, magnetos, battery circuit breakers, etc. So you can see it all there and you can go and look at what they are in the manual of standards, which is on the uh, federal legislation website. There's links to it from CASA, there's links to it from PPA, there's links everywhere. So these are the syllabus numbers and there's the categories. Now, if we continue to scroll down, what you'll see is now if we look at uh, flight instruments is the next section, you can see there is no section here for the RPL, only what's included in the BAK section. Okay, so things like um, color markings on your airspeed indicator, your primary flight instruments, the effects of blockages on pitot and static, everybody's expected to know that. Whereas over here, these PPLs are expected to be able to explain all of these and then describe indicated versus calibrated versus uh, true airspeed. Okay, and then they they need to know um, how pressure instruments, like state the effects of factors listed, um, to do with ASI, blockage and leaks in the pitot system, manoeuvring induced errors, for example, in compasses and dive VSIs, etc., like delays in your VSIs. Whereas over here in the BAK, you only really have to differentiate between IAS, CAS, and ground speed. So then here, PPL has a big section on radios, and RPL, BAK don't have that. And that continues all the way down here. Both RPL and PPL are now expected to know this information on GNSS, okay, so Global Navigation Satellite Systems. Then you've got aeronautical knowledge, power plants, more detail, a whole other unit for the PPL people. So um, aircraft systems, you know, stall warnings, trim indications, cutout mechanisms, um, take off and landing performance. So they want to know how, you know, how does density height, how does runway slope, uh, wet runways, dry runways, slushy runways, ground effect, frost, etc. So then we get into flight rules and you can see there's a documentation system for each. And as you can see, the RPL, um, you only, you need to know about like recording in your logbook about um, different documents that contain the different legislations and the purpose of an aircraft maintenance release. Whereas PPL, you know, needs to do more complex things like um, select appropriate reference documents, extract relevant current information from the documents. So they're going to ask you questions specifically from the documents. Um, you've got to decode in URSA. You've got to understand terms and abbreviations from the AIP and you need to know how to find them in the AIP, whereas an RPL is not expected to do that. Then you've got your license privileges for each license and so you just need to learn those. That's very important. That is in every exam generally. Okay, and then conditions of flight or flight rules. So in this one you can actually see that there's a lot more on, uh, emphasis on flight rules. They want to make sure that as soon as you start flying with your first license, you know them. So things like, you know, your, your steady and your green, uh, red and white and green lights, you know, to get signaled, for example, in the event of radio or transmission failure. Drug and alcohol, record the minimum periods between consumption. Okay, um, smoking in aircraft during takeoff and landing and refueling. 
Whereas over here, they only want to know some of the um, these ones here, like carriage and discharge of firearms, um, aerodromes where operations are not restricted to runways, relating to flights with um, PRD areas, and give examples of situations where uh, you would require a security prefix prior to a radio call. Then you have your air services operations, and again, you can see there's far more detail for the RPL than the PPL. Okay, so I'm not going to skip through all those. You can pause the video and have a bit of a read if you want. Then we have the aerodrome section, and they're reasonably similar in length, although the content does vary slightly. Okay, so you, you obviously need in both of them to know your markings and your threshold markings, what your different thresholds are, your cones and plates and gables, taxiway markings, holding points, and then what your symbols are, you know, for your glider operations and restricted to hard movement areas and things like that. So then we have all our airspace limitations. Now, RPL only needs to describe the difference between controlled and non controlled and they need to be able to identify which documents that this stuff is prescribed in, whereas PPL needs to know a heap more about the uh, airspace legislation. And again, you can pause that and have a read of all those things. So they, and then we've got emergencies and accidents, security and emergencies in SAR. Now they're reasonably common, the emergencies in SAR, but this is an additional section in the PPL. Then PPL has human factors, okay, it has quite a big section on human factors here, dealing with all different things, right down to how the eye works, how the ears work, the inner ear versus the outer ear, diet and exercise, headaches, migraine, alcohol and smoking, aging, um, all of those types of things. Night vision would be pretty much limited to the CPL. So then we've got some general health and fitness ones to do with alcohol, Quantity consumptions, for example, the 14 and 21 drinks per week maximum for uh, male and females. So it's 14 for female, 21, all those types of things. Drugs, uh, classification of drugs, you know, what's a drug classified as, frequent use dependence, etc. And blood donations. It also goes into hyperventilation, atmospheric pressure changes on the ear and stomach and trapped gases. Your basic knowledge of your anatomy in your ear, that's a biggie that always seems to be in there. Um, and then a lot on your spatial um, disorientation and illusions, especially like your runway approaches and sloping runways, wide runways, narrow runways, etc. And then your vertigo, your visual illusions, your sloping horizons, etc. So again, you can pause all that and look at that. That's a huge difference between the PPL and the RPL. Motion sickness, accelerated Gs, Toxic hazards to do with carbon monoxide poisoning from leaky exhausts and things. Then there's the atmosphere and associated problems um, to do with the PPL as well. Hypoxia, human factors considerations. So for example, introverts versus extroverts, memory limitations, all of that type of stuff. That is not in the RPL, but it is in the PPL. Principles of first aid and survival. And then now, threat and error management. In the, you need to be a little bit careful here. In the syllabus, RPL doesn't have threat and error management, but it has been coming up in some people's exams. So you definitely should go in and know the three basic principles of TEM. And then you should know how to categorize the basic ones, what a threat is, what an error is, what an undesired aircraft state is. Then we get into navigation. And as you can see in RPL, there is no navigation, but they need to know these things from the BAK syllabus on navigation. So they need to be able to identify major features displayed on visual charts, state charts used to identify these things. They need to know about PRD areas. They need to be able to find things in URSA and determine data pertaining to PRD areas. Use URSA to determine the time of restricted areas. That's all the RPL needs to do. If you want to go on and do an RPL navigation, then that's a whole nother story. That's You need to look up the actual syllabus for that. Whereas PPL has quite an extensive section on navigation, including calculations of fuel and flight times, ground speed, wind calculations, one in 60 corrections, all of those types of things. Computation techniques, here, here's all the things you've got to compute. Pilot navigation. 
okay so you can see it's it's quite extensive and you can start to see why the RPL is only two hours and the PPL is three and a half because there's just so much more in it then we get down to meteorology now the big difference here is the basic meteorology is just about local issues you know stay clear of thunderstorms low clouds poor visibility and turbulence okay know how to look up your forecasts know which forecasts are relevant know how to interpret them okay recognize signs including forecasts and pilot observations of the dangerous things around you like for example turbulence thermals dust devils also wind shear is a big one for the rpl whereas ppl goes into a whole bunch of different things layers of the atmosphere eyes are temperature and eyes are uh, standard uh, atmospheres explain why weather forecasts um, occur below the stratosphere go into heat temperature pressure humidity elevation q and h etc all the different types of clouds and precipitation visibility and the different things that affect visibility winds and everything to do with wind squalls gas backing and veering which is you know how does the earth's gravitational and surface and things like that affect the way winds turn okay and you've got to calculate all that out air masses all the different things like monsoons occluded fronts wave depressions uh, wind changes backing and varying stability turbulence cloud types okay and then the flight considerations for the weather and that's a big section in itself then there's ppl operations and performance and you can see here there's not much in that on rpl but there is this little section over here from the bak where you need to know these speeds for rpl okay you also need to know those as you can see here they're in the ppl as well you've got to be able to apply um, all items from ursa you've got to be able to look up ursa you've got to know about vfr day operations you really absolutely for both rpl and ppl should be so familiar with the uh, vrg that it's not funny ppl needs to know how to do uh, flight plan preparations uh, they need to know how to do equi time point which is bizarre because we've only really seen those in uh, cpl but they're now saying that they're in the the uh, syllabus but we haven't seen them in the exam and then over here so rpl and ppl will need to know these you know how to do your weight and balance so this is alpha bravo and charlie loading systems everybody needs to do those you need to all need to do your takeoff and landing performance charts particularly the four box type and um and then you've got a ppl needs to know this airworthiness equipment okay um you've got to be able to determine the validity of things um list the outstanding and uh, defects and endorsements and decide whether this affects airworthiness so there's a bit of legislation there to go into then we've got more operation and planning and to do both, both these categories have landing and takeoff information and you can pause the video and have a look PPL is big on having to calculate TODA, TODR, which is your takeoff distance required. And what they do is give you things like, hey, there's a tree on the end of the runway. How much does that restrict the runway? Or there's a crane or there's a temporary uh, obstruction at the end of the runway. And how much will that displace the threshold? And generally, you'd use 5% for that and you'd work it out 1 in 20 rule and calculate it. Whereas RPL doesn't need to do that. They just need to describe the effective crosswinds, um, list the advantages of taking off into crosswinds, etc. Whereas PPL is definitely going to have to calculate crosswind factors or components, as you can see here. Um, they're also going to have to do density height, pressure height, and I recommend that RPL should do that as well because they have appeared occasionally in the RPL exam. So here, local Q and H, pressure height, elevation, calculate the following density altitudes. So RPL need to know it because it's in the BAK section. Um, and then over here, we've got a bit more information. Um, PPL goes in a lot more information to do with the density heights, uh, to do with takeoff distances required, landing distances required, flap settings, how they affect certain things. And RPL needs to know VFO and VFE, the aircraft limitations, which is for your flap speed and your flap extension speed. Now then we get into, um, PPL has a little bit of information here on climb, cruise and descent performance. And aerodynamics, 
is a big section for the RPL. Okay, and it's nothing in the PPL on aerodynamics. Although, having said that, there are a few basic questions they're expected to know from here. But whereas RPL has quite a big um, focus on lift and drag, flight controls, and climbing and descending uh, with flaps and angle of descent, rate of descent, and things like that. Then this is very important. The RPL they want to make sure that you're not going to kill yourself. So they have a big section there on stalling, spinning, and spiral dives. And you need to know all of these. And you need to know also about wind shear with vertical gusts, your manoeuvring speed, um, describe the aerodynamic principles, why stalls happen, how they stall. For example, kicking rudder quickly in a turn, using bottom rudder, all those types of things. And then also how turbulence can cause structural damage. Okay. Then in the BAK, so this is applicable to both, you've got these basics which are things like um, you know true versus magnetic your compass headings navigation and visibility time all your different units of measurements and your conversions which are all in the vfrg and then your basic physics and they also have you're expected to know about your fuels and oils for example oil um, you know why you need it why it needs to come up to temp what happens if there's not enough of it and then engine handling all these types of things about maximum minimum temperatures pressures um, rpms overspeeding so props and things and then there's a big malfunction section which everybody's expected to know one of their favorites is malfunctions of the alternator the magneto and the battery and they'll use zero um, left or zero center am amateurs and you'll be expected to know what's going on there with with each of those and then fuel pressure things uh, for example your uh, when you get the vapor locks in there pump issues um, throttle ice carb ice etc so that, my friends, that is it. That is the difference between the BAK, the RPL, and the PPL. So the BAK is included in both the RPL and PPL. Now, you, you can get those by going to CASA website, um, look up the Manual of Standards, and go to Volume 3 in the Manual of Standards, and then you'll see in the contents, you'll be able to see all the ones that are relevant to the RPL and the PPL. But this one here, you need to know, is only relevant to, um, sorry, is relevant to all license levels. So I hope that helps. I'm Matt from pilotpracticeexams.com. We've got thousands of practice questions at pilotpracticeexams.com. Come over, check us out. We've got a Facebook group with well over 2,600 Australian student pilots and pilots up to IREX level. We don't go any further than that at the moment. And we'd love to have you come and uh, join us and benefit from our great resources. So if you enjoyed this, please give us a like. That's the only way YouTube knows to share our content with more people. And come and check out pilotpracticeexams.com.